tendering some thoughts on the Di Carvalho issue uh, with the polemic with uh, Alexander Dugan oh, on the specific um, question of uh, Rene Descartes and uh, dualism. So it may be uh, true in some sense that uh, Carvalho's uh, or let me state it this way. It could even be that Carvalho has not studied Descartes uh, with any closeness. So how could he have, in the proper sense, uh, constructed um, the exact sense of uh, Descartes' substance dualism, uh, which I give, I think, in the most exact way by saying if the world were obli utterly obliter obliterated, uh, there would still be a second, the world, that would be the first substance, and then there would be a second substance, which would be the cogito. Um, that being said, isn't it so that uh, that's my reading of Descartes? Uh, that's the way I understand Descartes, that's the way I try to think of it. Um, I've spent some time studying Descartes, not just the meditations, but his uh, actual the books he put forward as meant to be the teaching materials. Um, and that's uh, on that point, that's not the whole point of Descartes, but on that point, I think that's what he means, that other people could take it up in another way. So one thing is, so far as we're moving from uh, in concreto, or as it were, uh, an individual thinking of the matter, there must be as many individual thinkings of the matter as there are people thinking about it, uh, which, however, doesn't mean that they wouldn't all come upon the same species connected to the same uh, universal thought. Maybe that's uh, the truth, so just in the same way. Uh, Hegel moves from the individual and he says, you have to write it down, which then makes it into uh, something that could be understood as a species in the universe, not as uh, that thing that is irreducible and can't be uh, spoken uh, in the pred predication form. Um, some other reflections of a like manner. So Carvelio is saying all... Uh, peoples have had some kind of uh, dualism of this kind. Um, one piece of evidence in favor of that, uh, well, to begin with, that Heidegger has uh, convinced Husserl that Husserl's way of doing phenomenology, which begins with Descartes, was already practiced by the Athenians and by Aristotle in particular, is the kind of evidence of that Descartes himself says uh, everything I, I, René Descartes, says has already been thought. He just puts particular emphasis on it. Theotetus is, uh, is Theotetus flying, is Theotetus dreaming. Uh, we already have this notion that um, it may be to dream. It's just that the Athenians didn't uh, uh, care to found their notion of knowledge on the external world. So they just said, okay, it could be a dream. Who cares? Let's go to news. Let's go to discourse, let's go to other ways of accessing the truth. He didn't go into it that much. Descartes wants to found uh, his way of um, moving forward on um, these two substances, uh, on the external world understood um, as real so far as mathematical thinking can um, uh, represent its uh, represent it, and also on uh, the cogito, which thinks mathematically as something which exists, uh, even if the world were a dream or if the world were obliterated and, and ceased to exist. Um, so true, in a way, maybe that tech exact thought doesn't exist, but on another hand, maybe it did in many uh, individual cases. Maybe people do kind of think about it that way in other cultures, such as the uh, notion of, um, you know, Maya with the uh, uh, Hindu and so on, and uh, uh, Buddhist thinking. Um, there are this kind of thought uh, arises. Um, 
uh, a friend of mine uh, who studied the Codex Loud and um, was an anthropologist who spent a lot of time in Mexico, around Mexico studying uh, Aztec things, uh, when he was in his late 80s, came out with some uh, spontaneous reflections, which were almost identical to the reflections we get in uh, Bustro. Uh, you know, he was saying, how is it that we take it for granted? Basically, he's saying, I paraphrase slightly, but how is it we take for granted that uh, things just go on like this? So, you know, you go around the corner, you go a few blocks, you think spatially, you think every in every way things are going to be basically sort of like this, just populated with different things, different colors, but basically they're like this. Why do we take that for granted? Um, I think he kind of encountered that uh, thought without having studied the modern phenomenology or post uh, which again is a proof that uh, you could see why Husserl was convinced by Heidegger's claim that this thought far from being original had just been sort of forgotten in the, because of the accrual of the history of thoughts and because people uh, go into um, sort of the higher stages of the house rock the, towards the ceiling rather than the foundation as Husserl expressed with Strauss. Um, so uh, to summarize one thing the move which is uh, traps us in um, the Western thinking is the move from the concrete or the individual to the, the species or the abstract uh, the abstract which is always abstract uh, thinking towards the universal or the whole so in other words uh, once I say this particular scenery around me is a species or an example of any possible um, spatial environment that any possible spatial environment is the um, I'm thinking already towards uh, any all possible this notion of infinite number of examples of spatial environments, which is the, the universal. And this is just one among the universal. Um, I've moved somehow out of uh, the dumb ready to hand into uh, a giving expression in a particular way through predication in language. Um, so thought that way, uh, there's some sense to what Picavolo says. Um, of course, we should realize that if somebody who's a serious thinker is in a polemic uh, with Alexander Dugan, that's a good thing, because then you get to see uh, maybe Dugan made a mistake somewhere. Uh, also, we get to think Dugan more closely ourselves. That's totally good. It's, it's bad when uh, you get people who aren't serious thinkers um, just... Uh, slinging mud or whatever uh, but on the whole I think it's an occasion uh, to think or as it were to do this um, confrontation as Heidegger says we have to not just reject uh, those who make serious polemic but to enter into their thinking and, and try to um, uh, see how much we can learn from uh, the polemic, uh, and in this case, I think uh, one can learn quite a bit there. And also, it shows that in a way, uh, Heidegger, from his own ground, uh, however closely he thinks the history of philosophy, is always thinking it again and again in um, from the. You see, not even even that notion of the move from the concrete to the species or the abstract and end it from out of time to writing time down as in Hegel that's a specific uh, notion and it's already an interpretation of what the, the Western tradition is doing which all which also itself has to be thought through um, from a Straussian point of view in a certain way um, if Di Carvalho was were wrong, uh, 
um, then, well, okay, Descartes can be wrong without the whole Western tradition being wrong, but um, in a way, his, if he's right, that there's always this dualist thinking, that's a sign of a, of a ground, of a Platonic ground, which you always have to move from. But in fact, Heidegger uh, denies that, and he says this is already, in some way, an ill-founded ground. It's the ground of um, proclaiming something with the Logos out of uh, that which was prior to the Logos in such a way that you're always um, going away from that which is never the same from being. Uh, so I think there's a lot of um, room for uh, tendering uh, worthwhile reflection in that provocation of uh, Carvello.